Tyrian purple, also known as Tyrian red, royal purple, imperial purple or imperial dye, is a bromine containing reddish purple natural dye. It is a secretion produced by several species of predatory sea snails in the family Myricidae, rock snails originally known by the name Murex. Background Tyrian purple may first have been used by the ancient Phoenicians as early as 1570 BC. The dye was greatly prized in antiquity because the color did not easily fade, but instead became brighter with weathering and sunlight. Its significance is such that the name Phoenicia means land of purple. It came in various shades, the most prized being that of blackish clotted blood. Tyrian purple was expensive. The 4th century BC historian Theopompus reported, purple for dyes fetched its weight in silver at Colophon, in Asia Minor. The expense meant that purple-dyed textiles became status symbols, and early sumptuary laws restricted their uses. The production of Tyrian purple was tightly controlled in Byzantium and was subsidized by the imperial court which restricted its use for the coloring of imperial silks. Later a child born to a reigning emperor was said to be Porphyrogenitos, born in the purple. In Biblical Hebrew, the dye extracted from the Bolanus brandarus is known as Argaman. Another dye extracted from a related sea snail, Hexaplex trunculus, produced a blue color called Teclet, used in garments worn for ritual purposes. From sea snails the day substance is a mucus secretion from the hypobranchial gland of one of several species of medium-sized predatory sea snails that are found in the eastern Mediterranean Sea. These are the marine gastropods Bolanus brandarus, the spiny dimurex, the banded dimurex hexaplex trunculus, the rock shell Stromonita hemastoma, and less commonly a number of other species such as Bolanus cornutus. The dye is an organic compound of bromine, a class of compounds often found in algae and in some other sea life, but much more rarely found in the biology of land animals. In nature the snails use the secretion as part of their predatory behavior in order to sedate prey and as an antimicrobial lining on egg masses. The snail all also secretes this substance when it is attacked by predators, or physically antagonized by humans. Therefore the dye can be collected either by milking the snails, which is more labor-intensive but is a renewable resource, or by collecting and then crushing the snails completely, which is destructive. David Jacobi remarks that 12,000 snails of Murex brandarus yield no more than 1.4 grams of pure dye, enough to color only the trim of a single garment. Many other species worldwide within the family Myricidae, for example Plicopua pura pansa, from the tropical eastern Pacific, and Plicopua pura patula from the Caribbean zone of the western Atlantic, can also produce a similar substance and this ability has sometimes also been historically exploited by local inhabitants in the areas where these snails occur. The dog Welknisella lapalus, from the North Atlantic, can also be used to produce red, purple and violet dyes. Royal Blue the Phoenicians also made an indigo dye, sometimes referred to as royal blue or hyacinth purple, which was made from a closely related species of marine snail. The Phoenicians established an ancillary production facility on the Isles Pua Pures at Mogador, in Morocco. The sea snail harvested at this western Moroccan dye production facility was Hexaplex trunculus also known by the older name Murex trunculus. This second species of dimurex is found today on the Mediterranean and Atlantic coasts of Europe and Africa. History The color fast dye was an item of luxury trade, prized by Romans, who used it to color ceremonial robes. Used as a dye, the color shifts from blue to reddish purple. It is believed that the intensity of the purple hue improved rather than faded as the dyed cloth aged. Vitruvius mentions the production of Tyrian purple from shellfish. In his History of Animals, 
Aristotle described the shellfish from which Tyrian purple was obtained and the process of extracting the tissue that produced the dye. Pliny the Elder described the production of Tyrian purple in his Natural History. The most favorable season for taking these shellfish is after the rising of the dog star, or else before spring, for when they have once discharged their waxy secretion, their juices have no consistency. This, however, is a fact unknown in the dyer's workshops, although it is a point of primary importance. After it is taken, the vein, i.e., hypobranchial gland, is extracted, which we have previously spoken of, to which it is requisite to add salt, a sextarius, about 20 florida, oz, about to every hundred pounds of juice. It is then set to boil in vessels of tin, or lead, and every hundred amphorae ought to be boiled down to 500 pounds of dye. By the application of a moderate heat, for which purpose the vessel is placed at the end of a long funnel, which communicates with the furnace while thus boiling, the liquor is skimmed from time to time, and with it the flesh, which necessarily adheres to the veins. About the tenth day, generally, the whole contents of the cauldron are in a liquefied state, upon which a fleece, from which the grease has been cleansed, is plunged into it by way of making trial, but until such time as the color is found to satisfy the wishes of those preparing it. The liquor is still kept on the boil. The tin that inclines to red is looked upon as inferior to that which is of a blackish hue. The wool is left to lie in sook for five hours, and then, after carding it, it is thrown in again, until it has fully imbibed the color. Archaeological data from Tyre indicate that the snails were collected in large vats and left to decompose. This produced a hideous stench that was actually mentioned by ancient authors. Not much is known about the subsequent steps, and the actual ancient method for mass-producing the two murex dyes has not yet been successfully reconstructed. This special, blackish clotted, blood color, which was prized above all others, is believed to be achieved by double-dipping the cloth, once in the indigo dye of H. Trunculus and once in the purple-red dye of B. Branderus. The Roman mythographer Julius Pollux, writing in the 2nd century AD, asserted that the purple dye was first discovered by Heracles, or rather, by his dog, whose mouth was stained purple from chewing on snails along the coast of the Levant. Recently, the archaeological discovery of substantial numbers of murex shells on Crete suggests that the Minoans may have pioneered the extraction of imperial Purple centuries before the Tyrians, dating from collocated pottery suggests the dye may have been produced during the Middle Minoan period in the 20th-18th century BC. Accumulations of crushed murex shells from a hut of the site of Copa Nevergata in southern Italy may indicate production of purple dye there from that, least the 18th century BC. The production of murex purple for the Byzantine court came to an abrupt end with the sack of Constantinople in 1204, the critical episode of the Fourth Crusade. David Jacobi concludes that no Byzantine emperor nor any Latin ruler in former Byzantine territories could muster the financial resources required for the pursuit of murex purple production. On the other hand, murex fishing and dyeing with genuine purple are attested for Egypt in the 10th to 13th centuries. By contrast, Jacobi finds that there are no mentions of purple fishing or dyeing, nor trade in the colorant in any Western source, even in the Frankish Levant. The European West turned instead to vermilion provided by the insect Kermes vermilio, known as grana, or crimson. In 1909, Harvard anthropologist Celia Nuttall compiled an intensive comparative study on the historical production of the purple dye produced from the carnivorous murex snail, source of the royal purple dye valued higher than gold in the ancient Near East and ancient Mexico. Not only did the people of ancient Mexico use the same methods of production as the Phoenicians, they also valued murex dyed cloth above all others, as it appeared in codices as the attire of nobility. Nuttall noted that the Mexican murex dyed cloth bore a disagreeable, strong fishy smell, which appears to be as lasting as the color itself. 
Likewise, the ancient Egyptian papyrus of Anastasia laments, the hands of the dye are reek like rotting fish, so pervasive was this stench that the Talmud specifically granted women the right to divorce any husband who became a dyer after marrying. Murex purple production in Tunisia. Murex purple was a very important industry in many Phoenician colonies and Carthage was no exception. Traces of this once very lucrative industry are still visible in many Punic sites such as Kirkuan, Zochus, Meninx and even in Carthage itself. According to Pliny, Meninx produced the best purple in Africa which was also ranked second only after tyres. Dye chemistry. The main chemical constituent of the Tyrian dye was discovered by Paul Friedlander in 1909 to be 6,6-dibromoindigo, a substance that had previously been synthesized in 1903. The dye was thus shown to be an organobromine compound. However, it has never been synthesized commercially. In 1998, through a lengthy trial and error process, an English engineer named John Edmonds rediscovered a process for dyeing with Tyrian purple. He researched recipes and observations of dyers from the 15th century to the 18th century. He explored the biotechnology process behind woad fermentation. After collaborating with a chemist, Edmonds hypothesized that an alkaline fermenting vat was necessary. He studied an incomplete ancient recipe for Tyrian purple recorded by Pliny the Elder. By altering the percentage of sea salt in the dye vat and adding potash, he was able to successfully dye wool a deep purple color. Recent research in organic electronics has shown that Tyrian purple is an ambipolar organic semiconductor. Transistors and circuits based on this material can be produced from sublime thin films of the dye. The good semiconducting properties of the dye originate from strong intermolecular hydrogen bonding that reinforces pi stacking necessary for transport. Modern hue rendering. Tyrian purple as Alia Society of America hue rendering true Tyrian purple, like most high chroma pigments cannot be accurately displayed on a computer display. Ancient reports are also not entirely consistent, but these swatches give an indication of the likely range in which it appeared. Blank, blank, this is the sRGB color number 990,024, intended for viewing on an output device with a gamma of 2.2. It is a representation of RHS color code 66A, which has been equated to Tyrian red, a term which is often used as a synonym for Tyrian purple. Website designed hue rendering see also purple hashtag Tyrian purple. Classical antiquity at right is the color called Tyrian purple that is used in website design. This color matches the color of the Tyrian purple cloak worn by Justinian I is depicted in mosaics in the 6th century Basilica of San Vitale, shown in the image of Justinian I depicted above. For latterly the color name Tyrian Plum is popularly given to a British postage stamp that was prepared but never released to the public. Shortly before the death of King Edward VII in 1910, cuneiform tablet dated 600-500 BC with instructions for dyeing wool purple and blue. Ref BM 62788 Painting of a man wearing an all-purple toga picture from an Etruscan tomb. Roman men wearing toga pretext eye with reddish-purple stripes during a religious procession. The Empress Theodora, the wife of the Emperor Justinian, dressed in Tyrian purple. A medieval depiction of the coronation of the Emperor Charlemagne in 800. The bishops and cardinals wear Tyrian purple, and the Pope wears white. A fragment of the shroud in which the Emperor Charlemagne was buried in 814. It was made of golden Tyrian purple from Constantinople. Heracles and the discovery of the secret of purple by Peter Paul Rubens, Musae Benet. 6-6-dibromo-indigo, the major component of Tyrian purple.